the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion on this the fifth Sunday after Easter. And what an extraordinary time we are living through. It's not the same as meeting in church, evidently, but I hope that you will feel welcome and able to join in as much as possible. I hope too that you have been safe and well and keeping your minds together as we journey through these very difficult times. Let us remember those during this little service who are experiencing great difficulties, periods of bereavement, periods of anxiety and fear, um, as we come together to give thanks to God for what we have been given. We'll join together in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the fifth Sunday after Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Standing before the high priest and the council, Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord and the Living One. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in that according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was thinking the other day what it was going to be like when we're all finally released from this lockdown and we can resume what we might call our normal routines. Although, having said that, I wonder whether our routines will ever be quite the same again. I was listening to one of the letters uh, written by that great English actress Celia Johnson the other day to her husband in India, describing her experiences on VE Day. 
And I had to acknowledge that frustrating and challenging and depressing and sad, though this current state of affairs undoubtedly is, and it has for many people been annihilating in the way in which it has torn some lives apart with terrifying speed. It is hard to compare it with what must have been experienced by our parents and members of that generation as they endured life throughout the Second World War. We've been enduring these trials of uh, coronavirus for fewer than three months. The war lasted five years. Five years of blackouts, of curfews, of separation, of the blitz, of devastation and bereavement, of evacuation of children accompanied by a sense of abandonment and of separation. Now, that is in no way to belittle what many members of our communities have been having to live through recently. And it's clear that we've all had to rearrange our priorities in terms of personal needs and personal wants and of our understanding of what other people have been forced to accept. Much has been demanded of us and much will be demanded of us still. And the future is anything but clear. I've been wondering what the days following VE Day, VE Day plus one, VE Day plus two, can have been like. Indeed, what the days post lockdown, lockdown plus one, lockdown plus two, will be like. And following from that, what the days following the resurrection, resurrection plus one, resurrection plus two, must have been like for the disciples. Then as now, nothing was clear, nothing was predictable. Which is why I resonate so profoundly with Thomas's reaction to Jesus. It's as though Jesus de deliberately oversimplifies his remarks. I am going to prepare a place for you and you know the way to find me. And Thomas's reaction is swift and wonderfully to the point. Lord, he says, we've absolutely no idea where it is that you're going, and how can we possibly be expected to know the way there? Now, this is the Thomas, you remember, who refused to accept the resurrection until he was able both to see and, more importantly, to touch the evidence for himself. His mind must have been in complete turmoil, and Jesus' response, clear and unequivocal though it is, doesn't immediately help. I am the way, and the truth, and the life. In other words, keep close to me, listen to what I have to say, watch what I do, and through that you'll begin to understand, possibly, some of the complexities of God which all links back to his very first words to several of the men whom he was choosing to become his disciples, follow me. Just that, no more, no less. Follow me. Now the no one comes to the Father except through me phrase is a challenging statement and one with which I have wrestled and continue to wrestle still. I cannot believe, as I know that some people do, many of them devout and committed Christians, that unless you sign up to Jesus as your redeeming Lord and Master, unless you accept the Christian creed in all its facets, you stand no chance of entering the kingdom of heaven, and nor will you ever understand what it is to be fully accepted and loved by God. I I cannot, in all conscience, sign up to this. To believe in a God who excludes all who have never heard the gospel, never encountered any aspect of the Christian life, still less to have been baptised into it, seems to me to apply limits and boundaries to God which are wholly un, uh, inapplicable. There's a wideness in God's mercy 
like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his mercy which is more than liberty. So perhaps best to leave the business of judgment up to God. Our task, yours and mine, is to do our utmost to identify and follow the path that Jesus calls us to follow. Which brings us very briefly to that appalling, horrifying episode in the Acts of the Apostles that we heard this morning, the stoning of Stephen. It's an event of hideous cruelty brought on by Stephen's outspoken and vehemently critical attack on the temple authorities, who, fettered by the chains of their confining beliefs, condemned him to a death of unspeakable barbarity. But whom do we find standing nearby, witnessing this spectacle and looking after the coats of those men who were hurling the rocks? It's Saint Paul, as it were in his earlier incarnation, known then as Saul. Now he, Saul, must have thought that he knew exactly where his own future path led. As an educated and a fervent Jew, he believed that his task was to round up members of this young group calling themselves followers of the way, in other words, those who were following the teaching of Jesus, to bring them to Jerusalem, to try them, and very probably to have them executed, which is, why, which is exactly what he was doing when he was on his way to Damascus, when he, his, his, his conversion occurred. How very differently, how dramatically, how unpredictably things turned out for him. And for the Apostle Thomas, Thomas had no idea in which direction his path would lead him. There was every chance, I guess, that he thought he'd be rounded up by the authorities and very possibly suffer the same fate as Jesus himself. In the event, it is believed that he became a missionary, travelled to southeast India, where he was killed in the year uh, AD 72, but no one knows for certain. And so we, how sure are we of our own futures? Probably not very, just at the moment. But can we take some comfort from the words that Jesus speaks to his disciples? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Stephen's last vision, moments before his death, was of the kingdom of heaven opening to reveal God, to reveal Jesus. Can we not, perhaps, in these times of anxiety and uncertainty, trust that both the wideness and the kindness of God's mercy will be directed towards us, towards you and towards me, and that in the end all will be well? There's a great 16th century, uh, 17th century poet, George Herbert, who in his poem, The Call, writes this. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a way as ends all strife, such a life as killeth death. Let us pray that it will indeed be so. Amen. This morning, our intercessions for St Paul's Clapham come from outside the parish church of Bromswell in Suffolk. Let us pray for our church, the unity of the body of Christ, that needless division might cease. Let us pray for the Queen and Prince Philip, our bishops, Christopher and Richard, and for all those in the Diocese of Southwark. We pray for Fathers Jonathan and Richard, Rosemary, our reader, Alison and all who serve us to make St Paul's work better in these unusual times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bishop Richard, in his homily of the fifth week of Easter, encourages us to ask questions 
and suggests that we may use this time of enforced confinement to reflect on our relationship with God. Let us pray that good may come from this virus, that we may take this time to reflect on how we can change as a society, as, in, in, as individuals, that we may be brought closer, be empowered by technology and not fear it, that we may form new relationships and rekindle old ones, that we might think how we can travel less, that we may have a lower impact on our environment, and that we may have a closer relationship with God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in government, in power, the ministers, the scientific advisers, those running the NHS, and all the individuals who together take the big decisions that keep us safe. Let us pray for those who have been affected by the virus, for the friends and the relatives left behind, for those in need. Let us pray for the hungry and the sick and the infirm, and in our community, for Claire, Father Jonathan, Ron, Sylvia, Samantha, and Cynthia, that health and wholeness might be theirs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a few moments to pray for and reflect on the lives of those who have gone before us, whether they be friends, family, or those that have only lightly touched our lives. This week we pray for Marion Sly, Jenny Allen and Arthur Turner. Lord grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. You'll know that these services are all pre-recorded, so the light, as it is with this one, the sun will be in different places, in different parts of this service. I hope you'll understand and forgive. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus, our risen and high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, he put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. But chiefly are we bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death 
and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of St. Paul and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, 
to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we say together, You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being present at this service. I hope and I pray that it is not long before we are allowed to worship together in the church. But until that day, I pray that you will stay safe, and that you will be loved and nourished by those near and dear to you, and that we will be able to speak soon and to enjoy one another's company. And so we sing our final hymn. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.